So then, the BTCC at Thruxton, it was quite the race, <laughs> quite the races even, with a lot of drama throughout it. I loved seeing the minis out in action. I even managed to catch the F4s that were running uh, after the final BTCC race. So, a bump day full of toka racing before going to watch the F1 around Circus Gilles Villeneuve. And there are all kinds of different stories. At first... It looked like it could be three different race winners for the first time this season. After Jake Hill was the first person to win on two separate weekends by winning race one. And then Tom Ingram crossed the line first in race two. However, well, he got that penalty, didn't he, for passing Dan Robotter by going through the chicane. And Jake Hill got the race two win. Wasn't able to make it a clean sweep, what, 19 years after Danny Eves became the first person to win three races in a weekend at the BTCC. In the end, race three, well, that went the way of Ash Sutton, who hasn't won all season, surprisingly. But, in having won race three, I believe that puts him back up into the lead of the championship. Uh, after Jake Hill took the lead after race two. It's been a fun event to watch, as it always is at Froxton, and there were all kinds of different dramas. I think that the chicane at the end of the lap was probably the source of the most of it. Tom Ingram had to cut the chicane twice, got a penalty in race two because of it, which whilst I sort of understand, I also sort of disagree with, because I understand the idea that, well, Robotom had to slow down, and Robotom lost a place to cook, but also at the same time, if they both just kept at their speed, I mean, it wasn't like you could really expect Tinkram to get the place back, because by the time that they'd gotten out of the chicane, Josh Cook had gone past Robotom. But it was still fun to see. It was great to see that drama unfold. And the only thing that's annoying is it means the race result was decided in the stewards booth. What I did also like to see was the difference between the rear wheel drive and front wheel drive cars still maintained in the BTCC. BMWs have fantastic launch. I mean, we saw that from J Hill at the start of race one and to a degree in race two as well. But they also have the tyre drop off that the front wheel drive cars don't. And we saw that in all three races. Colin Turkinson trying to fight through the pack and then dropping back at the end when he also ended up running out of hybrid. Or Adam Morgan as well. Jake Hill to a degree, though he seems to have gotten better at understanding the 330 compared to his stable mates. And of course, it was only three BMWs this weekend because we didn't have a Bobby Thompson. But what it has meant is that in the Manufacturers Championship, Ford finally get a win. They're the final one of the four manufacturers to pick up a win. But they're quite neatly at the top of the standings. In terms of the teams, it's the same story. Napa Racing is ahead of Bristol Street Motors, actually. Because, of course, BMW are split down, what, three different entries? One for Team BMW, one for Laser Tools Racing with MB Motorsport, and then a one for Zeus Cloud with WSR. In other stories, in the independents, I believe it's Aaron Taylor-Smith ahead of his stablemate Marky Doble. And then in the teams, it's still Evans Holshaw from Restart Racing from Team Hard. I think in the Jack Sears as well, Marky Doble still holds a comfortable lead. And yeah, here we are then. 40% of the way through the season and it's quite a big field spread. I think that Sutton has... Double the points P10. But we can see a three horse race starting to emerge. Three horse race with three different manufacturers. Potentially as well, we could see a fourth or fifth or even sixth driver come through in the back half of the season. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.